Let me ask you a question. Are you still using a python? Or even worse, buckets to do your water changes? Nah, there's a better, faster, more efficient way. And I'm gonna show you how. Let's go. Now before I get attacked in the comments, let me just say, the python is a great tool for water changes, but it's really just not that efficient. The way the python works, for those of you that don't know, is that you connect one end of it to your sink or your faucet, you turn on the faucet, and as the water comes out of your faucet, it creates the siphon through the tube, which pulls the water out of your tank and then down through your sink drain. Now, in order for this to really work well, you gotta keep your faucet on and running. That's a lot of waste of water going right down the drain. Sure, you could turn off your faucet once the siphon starts, but that's just gonna slow down the siphon even more. And if you got a big tank, that's gonna cause a lot of extra time when doing your water changes. So hopefully I can convince you to get rid of your python and do it the way that I'm about to show you. With a water pump and hose of your choosing, it's very simple to drop a pump into your tank, put the other end of the hose out the door, out the window, down your sink, down a drain, and the pump is going to drain your tank way faster than any siphon from a python is ever gonna do. For my 210 gallon tank, I use the Bovison 2600 gallon per hour water pump. The hose that fits this pump perfectly is a one inch internal diameter hose. I'll link both of these in the description below. But this pump can drain this 210 gallon down to 80% in about three to four minutes. They think they're gonna get fed, but they're wrong. Excuse me guys. Now the main reason why I'm making this video is because I get so many questions about how I put the water back into my tank. Because filling your tank with the python is going to be just as slow. What you do with the python is that you lock the nozzle on the faucet so that instead of water going down your drain, it's now being pushed through your hose and into your tank. But you're at the mercy at the water pressure of your faucet. That can also take a really long time to fill up your tank. So how do I do it guys? Very simple. I put my water pump inside of a plastic tote which is inside of my bathtub filled with water. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I bought this 55 gallon tote from Home Depot. I don't remember how much it costs but it's not that expensive. Maybe 20 or 30 bucks. And the reason why I use this tote, you don't want to put your water pump straight into your bathtub. You don't know what chemicals are in your bathtub. You got your body soaps, your shampoos, you got the chemicals that you use to clean your bathtub. You never know what kind of residue is left behind on the tub and you don't want to risk the chance of any of that getting into your tank. So instead, I put this tote inside the bathtub, I fill it up using the faucet from my bathtub which is going to be a lot stronger than the faucet from my sink. And then I drop the water pump inside the tote. Once the tote is full of water, I plug in the water pump and it shoots all the water right back into my tank. This is also a very easy way of checking the temperature of the water. All I do is adjust the hot and cold. I put my handheld thermometer underneath the tap to make sure that the water is at the temperature that I want it to be, which in my case is 80 degrees from my African cichlids. Once I've reached that temperature, I go ahead and turn the pump on and send the water right to the tank. Easy peasy. As usual guys, when I talk about water changes, I have to always mention this in every video, make sure that you dechlorinate your tap water. The way I dechlorinate my tap water, which is a surprise to some people, is all I do is add my dechlorinator directly into my tank just before adding in the new water. The dechlorinator is very safe for the fish. It's also going to dechlorinate the tap water immediately as soon as it starts filling up in the tank. So there's no issues with that at all. Now you don't necessarily need this 2600 gallon per hour pump. This is a really big, really strong pump. If you've got a smaller tank, I use a Vovison 800 gallon per hour pump for my 75 gallon tank. And that gets the job done in a good amount of time just as well. I'll also link that pump in the description below. All the pumps and hoses that I use, as a matter of fact, all the products that I use and recommend for aquariums is in one central location. They're in my affiliate shop at cavemanaquatics.com shop. Make sure you go check that out every time you need anything. It's there. Shopping there will help support the channel. I make a small commission off of each one of your purchases at no extra cost to you. So I thank you in advance. Like I said guys, always dechlorinate before adding the tap water. I'm gonna go ahead and add it right now. I use safe because I got a really big tank. All you need is one quarter teaspoon. Good for 300 gallons. That's it. Directly into the tank. Go ahead, ask me who got me these little measuring spoons. Then I've got the other end of my hose into the tank. And I just got this cool handy dandy clip right here that's gonna hold the hose to the tank and make sure it doesn't slide out. I'll have that in my shop as well. Check out that water coming in. I'm gonna plug in the pump right now. Check it out. 
check out that flow. No Python connected to the faucet is ever gonna fill up your tank this fast. Now, of course, there's gonna come a point because the pump is so big and strong, it's going to empty out that tote faster than the faucet on the bathtub can fill it. So eventually, you start to get water like this. But what I do is I just let it keep on running and filling at that speed. There's only so much you could do about your water pressure coming in. Now guys, I didn't plan this, it just worked out that way, but you're starting to see the transition of my lights going into sunset mode. Enjoy. When it's about halfway full, I like to turn my filters back on just to get that water cycling. What you see there is two FX6s with the valves open about halfway open. That's great flow coming out of the FX6. Does seeing some of these fish in my tank make you want to keep African cichlids? I know, I've been there too. Well, if you felt like you don't know enough about them to keep them on your own, I've got a great online course called Keeping African Cichlids, where I'll teach you everything that you need to know about keeping African cichlids. Make sure you go check out the course. I'll put a link up here and in the description below. And if you wanted to watch the whole water change process, then check this video out up here. I go through the whole thing. Vacuuming my substrate, 80% water change. It's a great video. You're going to love it. Or if you're a beginner in the hobby and you need some beginner information, check out this playlist down here. I put together a bunch of videos that is definitely going to be helpful for you. I'll see y'all on the next one.